now we will see <coughs> what happens if there are no initial values for a variable how to create it now let us say we have instagram and in instagram a new user is being created then there will be user id and username but coming to followers it will always be zero when you create it fresh right so in that case you don't have to pass zero as the followers you can directly put it there i will show you how to do it let us say there is a class user and now there is a constructor and using this constructor we can initialize the user name and user id but followers need not be initialized it is going to be zero user id and user name so these two parameters have to be given to initializer self dot id equal to user id whatever is passed that will be in stored in id and self dot user name equal to user name and now we are going to have followers which we are not going to pass we are directly initializing it to zero because initially when you create an account followers will be zero so this example i am giving you just to explain you that you need not always give initial values you need not always pass them you can write default values like this so when there are default values you can write like that so we are creating a user and you have to pass the user id and user name when you are creating a user in instagram user id and user name have to be passed and you can print the values of it Oh, in a one in the reason. Okay, so now if you print the followers, that count will be zero. Just let's try to run it. So you can see that the follower count is zero. Okay, thank you. Now we can also pass objects to a param as parameter to the methods. So again, you can pass an object as a parameter to a method of a class. and which means one object is getting other object so it is difficult to understand like that let's try to write a program for again instagram uh, users so let us say we are writing a program for instagram users so initialization function in it there should always be self in the beginning even though you are not using it Python will automatically fill it. You don't have to pass anything to it. And username and user user ID is given. now followers will be there as well as following will be there for an instagram account both the followers and following followers say how many people are following you following say how many people you are following so both of them will initially be zero now let's create two users user 1 and user 2 by passing the user id and user name let's create two users even though you have four attributes here we are passing only values to two attributes other two attributes are getting the default value so whenever anyone creates an account their initial followers and following will be zero now there are user 1 and user 2 let's write a method in the class which will actually increase the followers count so one more method is so now you have understand that if this particular account 
or whichever object is calling this method is following a user, then that user's followers count has to be increased. This is difficult to understand, I will explain you. Now, whichever object calls this method, it means that that object is following other, that user is following other user. Now, which user is following is being passed as a parameter. For example, let's write a code. Let's send, write the line here. User one dot follow. Now this is this is important to understand here. So we are writing user one dot follow user two, which means user one is following this user two. Now this user two is an object. User one is an object. Now the object of user two is passed to this particular method of user one. Follow is the method of user one. Now the follow of user one is getting user two. Now what happens, user 2's followers will be increased. That is why user.followers plus equal to plus this user, his follower gets increased and the particular user who is following, his following has to be increased by one. That is why I am writing self, understand it. User means this user whom the particular user is following, which means user 2. This user means user 2 user 2's followers are increased and user 1's following is uh, increased by plus 1. Now you can clearly see that we are not sending any any uh, object here. Self itself is going to be the object there. Self means the current object. Okay. Now we are printing user 1's followers. user 1's followers and following and user 2's followers and following now when we run it you can see that 0 1 1 0 ok thank you now let's see inheritance inheritance is a very powerful principle in object oriented design so once you have a code, if you have to reuse it and you don't want to write the entire code again, then inheritance is going to be very useful. So a class can inherit other class. So let us see what happens. Let's say there is a class called person. And now let us have some init. Init is not always required. Without init also you can create a class, okay. But whenever you have to initialize the initial values of the variables, in most of the cases we have to do that. In that case, we are going to use init. So a person is having name and age. So name parameter is here, name attribute is here, age attribute is here. Both of them are initialized when an object is created. When we create an object of type person, we are going to initialize it. Let's create one more method. So let us say display parent because this is called the parent class. That is why we are using the name parent. We will understand it later. This is called parent class and whichever class inherits this parent class is called as child class. So we are just writing in a one line form. This is from parent class. And let's print the name. So whenever you are going to refer to the variables of this class, always use self dot. Okay. Now Let's define one more class which is going to inherit this class. 
how does inheritance happen is while defining the class within the parenthesis you have to write a parenthesis and within the parenthesis if you put the parent class it will automatically inherit this parents class so employee is a subclass and parent class person is a super class or you can say employee is a derived class and parent is a base class and for the pair for the <coughs> child class let's have an initializer in a an employee will have id as well as salary so we are adding two more along with name and age id and uh, id and salary are going to be added the name and age are already present in the parent so you don't have to create it again they are already present in the parent therefore you are going to initialize only id and salary here self dot salary equal to salary now let's call initializer of the super class you can call the initializer of the super class by using its name or you can also use super word super keyword or a super method if you write super followed by parenthesis then you write the initializer it will call the super class initializer otherwise you can write the name of the super class followed by init and what is that you want to initialize so this particular method has got name and age that name and age we are passing it to the super class initializer which will be called so this initializer is calling the super classes initializer Now let's write one more method. Already display person is there in the super class. Let's write display child. Display parent and display child. Okay, so whatever name is given to this, that will be printed here. Now let's try to create an object from the child class, which is employee here, and we have to pass all the four parameters: name, age, ID, and salary. now we are calling display parent which is actually display parent is a method in the parent class and we are calling it using the child class object we can do that this is what reusability is we are using we are calling the method of the super class from the child class and also we are calling the method of the child class from the child class object okay so you can see that the parent name is displayed as suresh and the child name is displayed as suresh because both of them are getting the same name here okay now let us do one thing let's try to give the same name for the method this display method instead of using display child and display parent let's try to give the same name now what happens when you call display now when you call display the child display will be called so this is called as polymorphism where when you have two names two different names and different functions will be called at different times this is called as polymorphism and here the child class this is from child both of them are from child displays okay so this is from child this is from child 
okay so this is called polymorphism so these are the properties of object oriented programming now there are already classes which are built by someone else which are available in other packages we can also use those packages and create object from those packages which we will see in the next video okay